Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's broadcast, CRISPR-Seq and GuideSeq for Design and Evaluation of Guide RNAs in CRISPR-Cas9 Genome Editing Systems, presented by Julie Zhu, Professor and Director of Bioinformatics Corps, University of Massachusetts Medical School. I'm Alexis Kralis of Labritz, and I will be your moderator for today's event. We are delighted to bring you this educational web seminar presented by Labroots. Labroots is the leading scientific social networking website and producer of educational virtual events and webinars. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that this event is interactive. We encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen and type your questions into the drop-down box that appears on the screen. Our speaker will respond to your questions via email. If you have trouble seeing or hearing the presentation, please click on the Ask a Question box to let us know that you're having a problem. This presentation is educational and thus offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located at the top right corner of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credits. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Zhu. I will now turn the presentation over to her. Thanks for the kind introduction and the invitation, uh, Alex. And it's a great pleasure to be able to have the opportunity to speak to you about two bioconductor packages, CRISPR-Seq and GuideSeq, I developed to facilitate the design and the evaluation of CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing system. Before I get into the details of the software, I would like to give you an overview of the bioconductor, genome editing technologies, CRISPR-Cas9 system, and GuideSeq technologies. Some of you might be very familiar on some of the technologies, so please bear with me while I give introduction to these technologies. Bioconductor provides the tools for the analysis and the visualization and the annotation of biologic data. Initially, it focuses on DNA micro data analysis and visualization and annotation. And it started as the uh, 2001 when microarray technology took off. As the project matures, its scope has expanded to um, include all types of genomic data, such as chip seq, only seq, and single cell sequencing, SMP, polyomics. And current release includes more than 1,500 software packages and more than 1,000 annotation and experiment data packages. It's open source and open development. And the advantage of developing our software in as a bioconductor package is that we can leverage the rich annotation data, such as genome sequence and the gene and mapping. And also, we can leverage the um, plotting and the realization and also analysis tools already and um, available in the bioconductor. Here are the dozen packages we have developed here, and ranging from annotation, realization, and, and also a motif alignment, um, machine learning algorithms, and a taxi QC as quality assessment to um, genome and editing software tools. The first bioconductor package we developed is called Chip Anno. Chip Anno is for integrated analysis of chip seq data. And due to the uh, time limit, I'm not going to have time to go through all the packages. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. And today I'm going to focus on two bioconductor packages, CRISPR-Seq and GuideSeq for a CRISPR-Cas9 and genome editing system. The discovery of CRISPR-Cas9 system has ignited the imagination of uh, researchers and also clinical scientists. It feels like um, the novel applications have been developed with, uh, for almost every day, and ranging from uh, basic biology to genome research, genome, uh, gen the gene editing, also for um, medicine. In genome editing, a double-stranded break is made as the target site specific and double strand break is made by a programmer nucleus, such as uh, Zinc-Fintigan nucleus, uh, talons, and also CRISPR-Cas9 system. 
once the double strand break is made, and the uh, genome um, genome modif uh, repair pathway, such as non homologous antigenic and homologous direct repair pathway, are mobilized. And uh, for non homologous antigenic pathway, is a uh, um, error prone and resulting in random insertion deletion. And alternatively, when there's a donor template is provided, homologous direct repair pathway and these two precise DNA replacement. Before the discovery of CRISPR-Cas9 system, and zinc finger nucleus and talons has been used extensively. And however, uh, CRISPR-Cas9 is much easier and to construct and faster to construct, and it's quite effective. CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing system, it borrows a strategy from the way bacteria fights um, the invasion of a uh, virus. When the virus in, invades the bacteria for the first time, um, the part of the virus uh, DNA sequence called the protospacer is incorporated in the bacteria crispr -A. So crispr -A is a um, um, place to uh, store the past invaders DNA sequence. When the virus invades again, the bacterial CRISPR system will recognize uh, the, the sequence and thereby destroy the virus. So a few years ago, um, several researchers have found that um, the system can be engineered that not only can cut the virus DNA, it can cut any target sequence. It is engineered form derived from s pyogenes bacteria. There are two components. And the first component is in the purple blob, and depicted as a purple blob. That, that's uh, Cas9, which is a nucleus, uh, derived from the bacteria. And the second component is the uh, sgRNA, or a single guide RNA, which has also two components. One is the uh, constant region depicted as peach, and which forms seminal stem loop structure as scaffolding. And the second part is the variable region, which has 20 base and nucleotide and in S pyogenes uh, system, which can be altered to in this engineered form to target any size. In the target size also have two parts. One is the uh, variable is 20 base nucleotides, base pair with the variable region of the uh, sgRNA. And the other part called a pan, which is a shorter sequence, stands for um, a protospacer or the adjacent motif, uh, which is NGG in S. pyogenes bacteria. On the other hand, on, however, the PAM is not um, recognized by the guide A. Instead, it's bound by the Cas9. Only when both type um, portion of the uh, type site be bound, then the Cas9 will make a cut. And once the Cas9 makes a double strand break, and then the repair pathway will be mobilized to either disrupt the gene or make a targeting modification via non homeworks and the joining pathway or HDR. It seems that to design a system, a guide RNA for this system, is quite easy because you only need to scan for the PAM sequence. However, when you introduce nucleus to the system, another consideration is to avoid cutting elsewhere, which we call off targets. The so therefore the design goal is to maximize the on target cleavage, we call efficacy, and minimize uh, off target cleavage. So how what's the rule to govern this efficacy? And Dr. Ruth's lab and study and the rules by SA more than 1800 guide RNAs, tiny across uh, a possible target size, a panel of nine genes. And they, they use the sequence feature and for the extended guide sequence to construct a model to predict uh, how these sequence features affect the um, cutting efficacy. Here is a figure to depict only in a mononucleotide, how this mononucleotide affect the efficacy in different positions along extended guide sequence, 
including four nucleotides um, before the guideline RNA and three nucleotides after the pan sequence. And the top bar is favored. The, to the taller the bar, the more, eff more efficient, um, more significant. So, for example, you know, as an arrow indicates that um, the C at the position 20 of the guideline RNA, C is strongly disfavored, and G is highly favored. And so in, in addition to this mononucleotide, there are other um, features such as the dinucleotide and the GC content affect this as well. And later, uh, about two years later, 2016, the same lab um, actually has added even more guideline A's and uh, targeting more genes and construct a, a second set called the raw set two and found out that an, an additional features such as uh, melting temperature and also the, the position in the gene and all, also have additional predicting power. So they actually construct another um, rule called rule set two uh, for predicting the size. So not only the efficacy is important, we needed to study the rule for um, off-target. And Dr. Zhang's lab from MIT and studied about 700 guideline variants across for 15 target size in a gene. And what they did is they actually um, studied the guideline variants by varying the guideline by one nucleotide at a time. So including all possible single mismatches and try to compare the guideline with other mismatch. Here is the um, hidden map dep depicting the effects of different positions on the cleavage efficiency. As you can see, the green color means um, there's no effect, means the cleavage is high. And position, as you can see, not only position number, also position and um, Position also affects of target cleavage. For example, position one to five, colored in green, means there's no, almost no effect. But position 13 to 15 has a great effect. In addition, they, they discovered that although the preferred PAM sequence NGG, NAG also have reduced effects. Therefore, when we design guideline A, we want strict the PAM sequence to be NGG. However, when we search for off-target, we need to consider NAG as well. In 2016, Dr. Ruth's lab created a bigger data set to study uh, whether mismatch type, in addition to mismatch position and number, affects the off-target cleavage. They discovered that and the mismatch type have greater effect and it's position dependent. For example, RGDT, as you know, indicated as a red arrow, there's no effect for this mismatch type. However, IADG has a greater effect in any position, in all position, basically. In terms of other mismatch type, they affect the cleavage in a position dependent manner. In addition, they also confirmed that NAG um, has a reduced effect. Plus, they've discovered uh, several other alternative PAMs with a reduced effect. Therefore, when we try to design a guideline A, we needed to consider mismatch type for off target cleavage site prediction. When you introduce a um, nucleus to the genome, you need to um, have a screening method to identify indels in a you know animal cell, animals or cells. And there are many methods. One of the um, least expensive and also very easy um, method is restriction enzyme digestion method. In this example, the target site contains a PST1 colored in red restriction site, and which overlaps with the a cleavage site of a Cas9, specified as arrow, a green arrow. After PCR application of the target locus, 
if then there is no index produced, the PST1 side will stay intact. After PST1 digestion, and the um, you will produce two bands, in contrast to one band without the enzyme. However, if there is a changes made in the PST1 side, that for example here is an A insertion, then the PST1 side will be lost, and the recognition side will be will be disrupted. Addition of this enzyme PST1 will produce one band just like the control cell. CRISPR-Cas9 technology evolves very quickly to increase the specificity and also to uh, expand the target side. There are many variants of Cas9 and also different from different species have been um, have been invented. For example, in the D, D panel D CP, CPF1 is a nucleus that recognizes a T-rich PAMS instead of GG-rich. GG and also it's in the five prime instead of three prime as, as PCAS9. And another uh, alternative, for example, there is uh, for E and F panel, there are a paired um, configurations. A E panel is in a paired knee case, which requires two knee case to bond that will reduce the off-target effects. And uh, another variant is DCAS9 with FOC1 nucleus, also requires paired. So all this, with all these considerations in mind, we design CRISPR-Seq as um, adaptive and also flexible and, uh, and uh, versatile. It not only um, identify guidelines using the published uh, on-target and off-target um, matrix, to predict uh, the um, site, but also it allows the flexibility to um, adapt, accommodate uh, Cas9 from different species, and also pair the configurations, and then we allow to use a different scoring method for newly published data, and also can restrict or constrain the uh, guidelines to impose. Uh, different uh, characteristics of the guideline A. And it also allows to restrain site uh, monitoring uh, by annotate the site. And in addition, it can design guideline A's to analyze close related sequences, such as allele specific guideline A design. All guideline A's can target both the alleles. Although most of the, most of the Features have been, um, some of the features um, have been uh, implemented in some of the softwares. And CRISPR Seq remains to be the most flexible, versatile, adaptive ones. To make it easy to use, um, two main functions, all of the uh, functionality have been captured or have been simplified into two uh, workflow functions. One is called off target analysis, the other is called pair two sequences. Off-target analysis workflow is for guideline eye search and off-target analysis annotation for one or a set of input sequences. The second is compare two sequence workflow for identify guideline eyes that are specifically target one of the two input sequence or target both. Here, I promise this is the only slide you know has this parameter setting, and um, so for. Make it easy to use the default setting of for off target analysis is all set for the uh, default SPI arginus, um, the most used and the well characterized one. And all you need is for the input file pass and also BS the genome name and then the square scoring method, and also the raw <clears throat> set. I apologize for this slide being uh, scrambled together. Um, However, you can find this method uh, in the package uh, by type help and uh, question help and the process uh, of target analysis. And all these parameters will be explained in detail uh, in the help page. And the reason to include so many, you know, almost like 60, more than 60 parameters is that 
the, the ability to easily change this parameter to fit your own needs is the key to be able to um, keep up with the um, ever evolving um, new technologies. The simplified on the simplest, actually, the simplest workflow in CRISPR-Seq is finding RNAs without off-target analysis by basically not providing any genome and by add, setting chroma to search with nothing, and you will be able to find on the guideline eyes in different format. And the advantage for using this uh, workflow is that and you, it's very, you know, the time is, is short time. It takes less time, and also it's a, um, it's a very easy to find whether you have a guideline on your sequence before you do extensive search in the genome. In this workflow, you can try, as I mentioned to you, and um, there are paired new cases have been deployed for and um, reduce the off-target effects. To find a guy and ace for this paired configuration, all you need to do is uh, basically set find a paired guy and ace true and minimal gap because and then maximum gap, that's configuration requirement for this. You need to set that to zero and 20. As you, are, you might know that there's another variant of a paired guy and I configuration called uh, DCAS9 fork one which requires a, a different configuration. And as you can see, the minimum gap is 14, max gap is 17. All you need to do is set this. As I mentioned, uh, you can use the restriction site to monitor or screen the mutation site. Um, here is how you find guideline A's with restriction site and overlap with the um, cleavage side. Here is how you do that by setting five gang A with an um, IE color only equals two. And the minimal IE pattern size you can change. And default is, you can set to six. And also overlap you know, for Cas9. And SP Cas9 is 17 to 18. That's the color side. But for other, okay, if you are using different um, Cas9 system, then you need to change it accordingly. So as I just mentioned, if you're using, you know, trying to find a guideline A's for different CRISPR system, for example, CPF1, and it's a, it requires a T-rich PAM, and the PAM location is five prime, and the guideline size is also different, and the PAM size is different. So all you need to do is change this PAM size, PAM, uh, guideline size, and the PAM and PAM location. Another one, for example, on um, NMCAS9, which actually has a PAM size 8. So you need to change that, and also guideline size 23, and change the PAM to the PAM preference. As you know, and different uh, guideline and pa promoters for guideline synthesis has a different constraints or preference for the guideline aim pattern. For example, U6 promoter, guideline pattern, it basically, if you set a guideline pattern to, um, to this, and okay, basically the carrot plus G means it started with G. It has the highest efficacy to, for um, synthesis. In T7 promoter, however, you would and if you, the guideline I start with GG, the synthesis will be more efficient. Therefore, you can set, you know, guideline that pattern. For other type of promoters or other type of constraint for guideline A, you can set whatever pattern you want uh, using a regular expression. The parameters I talked about also applies when you add off-target analysis in addition to guideline search. The additional parameter, all you need is to add input genome and sequence, BS genome. The, it will produce, I say, well, go through this. Basically, if you input sequence, input genome, it first not only find a guideline A, filter guideline A, then start a search on target and off target for each guideline A, and calculate the efficacy and the cleavage score. 
and also filter off targets, and then fetch the sequence and the general report. There are situations when you already have a, a list of garden A's and they just want to search for off target, then you can skip that by uh, setting the parameter find gang A to false. By default, um, CRISPR-Seq use the uh, weight matrix for predicting efficacy and off-target cleavage using the published data and a model from the Zon Lab and the um, Root Lab. However, if you know the data set is getting bigger uh, or more experiment has been conducted, then more accurate efficacy weights or mismatch weights been produced, you can um, change it or incorporate it into the system by setting efficacy weight or mismatch weights. It's important to um, indicate whether off targets are in a critical region of the genome. For example, axon in the genome, gene name. So what you want to do is basically, and we need to add another workflow, uh, another function into this workflow that is annotated target and off targets. In order to do that, we need to uh, input the transcript DB and the org anno and say annotated XR equals true. The advantage to deploy CRISPR-Seq uh, in the biconductor environment is that transcript DB and org anno helping and it's available in the biconductor and updated twice a year so that we don't have to, uh, you know, download or monitor or, you know, update the genome. I have discussed uh, the parameters, a subset of parameters and the workflow function for an um, off-target analysis. And here I'm going to go through a few files and output from uh, the analysis. And the first few in the guideline on A files, you know, restriction side overlap files and parasites are quite um, straightforward. And therefore I'm going to skip due, time, due to time limit. I'm going to focus on the bad file and off-target sites and also summary file. Here's, here's the uh, view of the UC, actually from UCS genome browser. And you can um, input your bad file. And um, each row is one guide on A. And uh, the color is in gray scale. And the darker is the higher efficacy. And the, the um, sticker portion of the uh, rectangle uh, indicates the uh, Cas9 cleavage site, and the arrow indicates the strand positive or minus. Here's one of the most important one uh, of the output file called the summary of the guideline A, the summary file. In this file, you're able to see um, one guideline A per uh, row and the position and to be viewed in UCS genome browser, and also the target efficacy and the top end of target score and the restriction side. And as you know, the top here is the top 10 of target. You can change it. There's a parameter there I can change it to. If you're interested in more, you can say top 20 or top five, top 100. And the score, so here's the question, how you select you know, the best one, right? And here, you know, if you want, um, really you want to use the student enzyme digestion and um, to monitor the um, cribbage, you will want there is a site to have a site. And um, if you use other method um, for tide, you know, other method, then you don't need to have this. And um, for this example, I highlighted the one in red. And um, this one has a, the highest, I think almost, okay, the second highest. And target efficacy. And at top of target, and it's quite low, um, I mean, compared to others, right? So and I highlighted this one. If you want to have a, a one with lowest half target, you would pick this one. And you want to balance both or three, then you want to use this one. However, you are, let's say you are interested in a um, system that you don't care so much about off target. You really want to maximize the you know, target efficacy, then you can use 
the last one. However, before you make the final decision, you really want to look the detailed off-target effects by going through the um, off-target um, output. And because you want to see whether the top 10 off targets really is just top one or actually is even distributed the score. And so here you can see that for each off target sequence, there's annotation about whether it's in Exxon or not. If it's in Exxon, you want to avoid it. And the weather is, you know, it's, it's a score, it's alignment really uh, show that the alignment score can show whether there, you know, there's a critical region of the guide guide and the weather is NGG or NAG. And also um, here are more information about the off target that you really want to go through that before you make the final decision. That's my take home message. Excuse me. <coughs> um, my collaborators, Aaron Aroni and the Brodsky Lab, uh, interested in um, study the uh, Huntington disease um, in, by inactivating Huntington disease gene to cure the disease. And however, the Huntington disease gene is it's a essential gene. You cannot um, inactivate both allele of the, of the gene and that be lethal. And so what it, I just want to briefly say what is you know, Huntington disease. Huntington disease is caused by expansion of the uh, CAG repeats uh, in the Huntington disease gene. Um, it's, 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 So in activation, both uh, uh, allele is impossible and it's uh, not feasible. And thereby we need to design guides that recognize the disease allele and uh, why leave the um, healthy allele alone. Here we helped to design the guideline A. And in order to help them to design guideline A, we actually um, create another workflow called compare two sequences, which is our motivation. And um, to identify guide and lays that specifically target one of the two sequences or both. And here we use this to basically we have two input sequences. And uh, the first find the guide A and for each of the sequence, and then search for off target for the other sequence, and then calculate the collegiate score and compare the sequence and also compare the um, the closely related sequence and their um, effects and the see what's the difference. So here is um, the sequence we identified, our guideline we identified that and have a great, great discrimination between the T allele and the C allele. As you can see in the top panel versus in the bottom panel. The top panel uses the um, off-target um, and cleavage score calculated the um, Calculated using the Zons lab, and uh, remember, uh, Zons lab uh, only model the um, the position and the mismatch number effects. The bottom one is from the uh, uh, Zoo lab, uh, which models also the mismatch type. For um, a real specific uh, guideline design, we need to use the second one, and uh, because otherwise it's a symmetric, and and it will not have a good discrimination. As you can see in the top, the discrimination only 7.9, right? 7.9%. The bottom one show that they can have 46, you know, percent, or 46, yeah. And thereby, this actually improved off target score in, in here can show that it can count for difference or real specificity here. And I'm going to talk about it. Genome wide unbiased identification of a double strand break enabled by sequencing called a guide seek. And uh, we develop a package to analyze such data. Um, so GuideSeq um, is um, um, published in Nature Method 2015. Um, in, okay, so here is how, you know, for design guide on ACE um, um, for CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing, um, for therapeutic uses, the most important thing is uh, minimize the off-target. Previously, people just you know select some genome site and to test whether there is a cleavage, uh, but it's very important to find out the genome wide where's the off target and what's the cleavage rate. Now, several methods have been developed. One of the most popular and easy to conduct 
method is called GuideSeq. Um, briefly, um, GuideSeq relies on the um, non homologous and joining um, repair pathway to co, co introduce the double strand oligonucleotide to tag the um, CRISPR Cas9 editing or cleavage site. And by integrating this site into the cleavage site and followed by, you know, um, at, and repair adapter ligation, followed by you know specific double strand oligonucleotide specific application, I created a, a library uh, which is followed by high super sequencing to um, basically um, gauge the um, the size and also the um, uh, cleavage uh, efficiency or F, um, of target cleavage um, rate. And this protocol is quite easy to conduct experimentally. However, um, the bioinformatics analysis is not straightforward. For example, there is a mo molecular index called UMI, and it's incorporated there to um, to prevent or to um, for removing of the um, PCA PCA mon PCA and bias. And also, there's an index, um, P7, P5 index involved, and um, to um, identify then different samples. So we develop a package called uh, GuideSeq um, to analyze such a data set. And as you can see, there are two, usually in this um, protocol there are two libraries. Um, one is we call plus strength, the plus library, and another can you know um, uh, minus library. So from here, you can see the, uh, um, the oligo tag being incorporated into a system from um, is it colored in red on the top and colored in blue in the bottom. And uh, we needed to identify the size with this. However, you know, modif the system also produced some of the uh, sequences without this. So we needed to remove um, the sequence without uh, this tag, because this you know this tag and uh, this tag actually indicate where where is the uh, cleavage site. If there's no tag, we need to remove it, and also we need to identify where is the exact site. And um, by here we tag here the uh, genomic integration site by the uh, black arrow, the se second black arrow uh, from the first top one, and the first arrow in the um, second part, and. Uh, here, so here's the workflow of our uh, package. Um, uh, the guide seek package is on the bottom and uh, it's wrapped in the um, dashed, uh, you know, rectangle. And the top one is the pre-processing. The pre-processing, as I said, we need to identify and um, the index. We identify different samples by using the index, and we need a map to the genome, and also we need to find the UMI for each sequence so that we can uh, remove the PCR bias. And all these pre-processed scripts are available in our website, um, CCB. And it's also um, available um, in a um, publication, in BMC Genomics. And after the pre-processing, the mapped file and the UMI file, and also the guide RNA file, and the reference genome um, can be used as an input to the GuideSeq package. And the GuideSeq, briefly, the GuideSeq package, package basically has a read processing to remove low, map, you know, low mapping quality reads and whether it has a presence of DSODA tag and also remove duplicate reads using, using the uh, UMI and also define where is the integration position and uh, tag the uh, original reads uh, in, the, in the strand, and then aggregated reads and uh, using window-based approach to identify peaks, and actually strand-specific peaks, peaks, and then merge neighboring peaks and filter them. And then we, um, using identified peaks and find the homology to the target site, and the uh, option that we have, uh, you know, if you have a control sample, you can subtract the peaks from control sample. Uh, associated the genomic features as optional and a general report. And then we can also can compare peaks with different uh, nucleus. 
So here is a, an example of VGA free site and from our guide, actually our own guide seek uh, data. And as you can see, and the um, tag integration site, it uh, actually uh, has all these uh, reads and piled up there. And most of the reads uh, are in located uh, near the, or in actually, the cleave site, which um, indicates that it's quite uh, a good uh, uh, tag, good uh, system to monitor the clip site. And so here in the, for peak calling, we have a window-based approach. In default, it's 20 base. You can change it as easily because the different size of the guide or different PAM sequence might um, have a different preference of, of this. So you may change it. And also I can see that you know, Watson counts actually is on the downstream of the uh, cleavage side and the quick counts on the upstream. And um, after we have um, created peaks uh, for different uh, um, strands, then we merge that use this specific orientation. Oh, actually. And I forgot to tell you that actually, you not only can filter the peaks using the number of uh, reads in these different windows, in windows, you know, these different windows. You also can also have the function that allow you to use the um, background uh, um, counts as a, um, a to model or Poisson distribution, then uh, find, find the p-value uh, for each window, and you can use p-value to filter as well. To make it easy to use, uh, we can um, basically um, incorporate all the functionalities into one workflow function called a guide seek analysis uh, with more than six parameters. And for the default uh, SPCAS9, which is mostly widely used and also well characterized, and you only need to tell the you know, genome you, you, are, you want to find a homology on a guide and line file and alignment in profile, you mean profile, which are from the pre-process um, steps. So here are a few use cases you can use this function for. Uh, for example, you can anal analyze the uh, galaxy data from SPKS9, which is a default, which is quite easy. And also you can use it for an MLKS9, as we discussed. And they have different prime preference and, and also guide size. And, and also you can analyze CPF1, which is you know, use a different, actually, not only different PAM sequence, also different PAM um, orientation. Pen position, which is five prime, and you can annotate off targets. You can merge them from multiple experiments to facilitate comparison among different nucleus configuration or vari variants. So here is an output from another function called uh, combine off targets. Uh, frequently, when uh, you uh, try to investigate a new nucleus or new configuration. Uh, one pro common practice is to include the, um, uh, the commonly used one and uh, also study different treatment, different, you know, different configuration. And it's easy to compare them. If you use this combined off targets, you can merge the off targets and then create a, create a, a Venn diagram for you quickly and, and examine whether the newly created, uh, um, newly uh, designed um, Cas9 system is a better one or, or even a worse one in terms of off-target coverage. For example, here the right side one, one called SP Cas9 MT and have a, has a much less off-target. Now, for guidance seek uh, data analysis in the pre-processed stack scripts, you can download them. And um, uh, it basically including you know how to sign different samples, use P5, P7 indexes being barcode, and uh, remove adapters and extract UMI for each read and map to genome. The scripts are readily uh, user and um, configurable. The reference the help and it, the, the, both packages have been published uh, in the paper, uh, following paper, and uh, so and there are a lot of uh, use cases are already there. And also in the bioconduct package, package we have um, the, not only in the, um, the use pages for each function, but also there are um, use cases for different uh, scenarios and uh, document there. 
for the user guide. And also we have given like workshops uh, in our department, also in uh, in bioconductor. And uh, you feel free to go through there and to find um, the relevant materials. Now, future directions. Uh, so I think we need a more precise guideline efficacy prediction, also more accurate uh, off-target calorie prediction. Uh, as more data set become valuable, like expanding, for example, gas seeker become valuable, then we can more incorporate this into uh, the, um, the cleavage um, prediction or off-type cleavage prediction, and then incorporate and increase per seek. Um, I think I have something. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, for the fourth line, actually uh, supported by conductor or um, place, the fourth uh, dot, uh, dot line, and for any questions, uh, please feel free to post them in the support um, by conductor side. And um, the advantage to uh, post there is um, the question and answer are you know uh, archived and searchable, and also um, um, users can help each other to answer questions. Um, okay. Now uh, I would like to thank um, uh, Alex uh, for having me here and the team. And uh, Tiffany for um, you know for um, hosting this, and uh, also want to thank my collaborators and UMass and also Brad, uh, MIT and uh, Genotech and the five of my core members. And thank you very much um, for 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 time for your time and attention. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zhu, for that informative presentation. We will now start the Q&A portion of the webinar and we'll address some of the most commonly asked questions by our viewers. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window. Type your question into the box that appears on your screen and click the Send button. Our speaker will follow up with your questions via email. So let's get started. Our first question is, how do you calculate rule set to efficacy? Oh, yes. So it's a great question. Rule set to, you can set the uh, rule data set equals, okay, question um, quote, root underscore rule set to underscore 216. By default, it's rule set one, which is root rule set one, 2014. And you can get this information by type help um, quote actually help um, parentheses and then um, off target analysis parentheses again uh, in the R um, console. Thank you. Now, our next question is How do you specify the program to use the off target matrix from Root Lab, which models the mismatch type as well? Um, so, again, there's a um, um, you can use the scoring dot method uh, equals CFD score. By default, is HSU Zons Lab. And here, uh, um, also, you can use the help, again, help, parentheses, off target analysis, parentheses. And you will see the detailed description of scoring data method and rule set data set. Thank you. Now, Dr. Zhu, our next question is, how do you pick the best guides from the summary file and off-target file? It's a great question. And it uh, really depends on the goal of your experiment. If it's for therapeutic purpose, the major or the top priority is to minimize the off-targets. So you would want to pick the guidelines that have the minimum off-targets and also you want to look at the detailed off-target uh, output file to make sure uh, the off-target, total off-target, not only the total off-target score is low, but also there's no major off-target. That's in critical region of the gene, such a, or genome, such as, you know, hexon. And however, if you are, into, you are just to uh, perform a screening experiment to knock down some gene, and you want to find some, you know, um, um, just just for screen animals, then maybe efficacy is in the prior, primary consideration for you. And for some others, you maybe want to think, uh, you know, have a um, combined 
um, consideration. For example, you want to have a quite high efficacy, you know, but not necessarily in the lowest, you know, off target, or you want to have you know, very minimal off targets, but then have some kind of consideration for also for guide efficacy because you don't want them have no effect at all. So it's really kind of quite a complex situation <clears throat> question. It de really depends on what's your goal of an experiment. Thank you for the great question. Now, can I run a genome-wide search of the GNRAs, or excuse me, of the RNAs? Um, yes, definitely. And uh, actually some people from, I think, uh, uh, if I remember the name actually, and from, uh, I think from Harvard, and the uh, core, uh, the CRISPR core, they try and they actually try to use this to design like genome-wide guides and library. So yes, definitely. And if you want to do that, depending on the species, if you have a big, like large genome sequence file, for example, humor, you want to run it uh, in a cluster, um, cluster uh, framework. For example, you may want to split the sequence into different files and run them, you know, uh, parallel, and then combine the results later. Does that answer your question? And it looks like, <laughs> and it looks like we have time for one more question. So, what do I do if the species I am designing gRNAs for does not have a genome available in the bioactor? Okay, that's that's also a great question. You can um, create a BS genome using. Um, BS Gene Forge, uh, which is available uh, in uh, Bioconductor as a um, uh, as a package, you basically you forge in the BS Gene, and uh, in addition you also can use uh, compare two sequence to do that using the second sequence, and as um, a second sequence as a, as a genome sequence you have, and the first one you just you know have a sequence you want to search, and that's one of the other. Mm, approaches, but then the best one would be using a uh, off-target analysis function, workflow function, and however you create your own BS genome and, and packages according to the uh, uh, guidelines and uh, in the um, uh, bioconductor. Thank you. I would like to once again thank Dr. Zhu for her presentation. I would also like to thank Lab Roots for making today's educational webcast possible. Before we go, I want to let everyone know that today's webcast will be available for on-demand viewing through January of 2019. You will receive an email from Lab Roots letting you know when this webcast will be available for replay. Please share that announcement with your colleagues who may have missed today's event. That's all for now. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.